On this episode, we have a bad idea. Brain sharing! <laughs> Immediately, we write cursed code. The, the fact that everything is just like one big line is... is <laughs> And we inevitably suffer the consequences. Yeah. Ooh, yikes, that doesn't feel good. Oh, good coffee. Hi, everybody. This is Christian from LazyDevs Academy. This is the Advanced Schmap Tutorial. This is episode 54. <laughs> okay. Uh... Let us go to brain edit. Let's just jump straight in because there's some things we want to do today. So we started working on some uh, behaviors for different enemies and so far it's going, it's, it's great. It's, it's going great. It's great. It's great. Um, we had some problems last time around. Uh, we realized that um, writing code uh, in this editor is sometimes a bit um, like adjusting code is sometimes a bit difficult because you want to maybe insert lines in between there and that means you have to delete everything and then reconstruct everything. It would be nice if we could somehow, um, you know, insert a line in between there. And I, I've been thinking about this and I think I have a good solution for this. Maybe you have some better solutions to let me know. Um, but my idea was that basically, you, you know, you have to like this plus button there that adds a line at the very end. I was thinking uh, maybe adding a plus button, uh, the plus button on every line at the end. Now we had kind of like a similar setup in the list, uh, in list view on, on, the, on the Excel editor kind of thing, right? Where there's a plus button, the, the fourth button in each line is a plus button and that button will, um, well, I was thinking adding a line underneath, that makes sense to me, like it's kind of like pressing enter on a line and that adds, adds a line underneath. Uh, if you do that, technically we cannot insert a line as the first line, but I think that's, 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 that's gonna be fine. I don't, I don't mind that too much. Okay, okay. Um, so this is, um, mm -mm, yeah, this is the refresh brain. Yes, yes, yeah, yeah. And this is adding uh, stuff to, uh, to each individual line. So we, wait, is it? Is it? Is it? Is it at all? And then I guess here at the end, so this is basically writing the command. And then this is the writing the subsequent three, um, three, like the another three, the, the two parameters, right? This is the command and these are the parameters. So here we, we something we can do is now, uh, huh. how are we going to do that? Well, okay, you know what, if true, I'm gonna, <laughs> Uh, I'm, I'm writing if true, because later on this true, I'm going to replace with like a, like a smart test on which line we are currently on. I think it's it's just cell X. Oops, uh, that was that was all on me. What just happened? Oh, uh, Dropbox. I don't. Mm, sorry. Um, so yeah, so I this will be true always, but eventually the true will be we're gonna replace it with the check for so the plus only appears on the line that we're currently selecting. So we don't have so much pluses, but at first I wanted to see the plus, right? Um, so yeah, we're gonna take this bad boy, we're gonna get this out, and we're gonna put this in here, right? Something like this. Uh, I'm gonna call it new line. Um, we're not going to add it to menu, we're going to add it to L and E. Uh, and it's not going to be inside its own array, uh, its own table. Um, now the positioning is, uh, yeah, so it's going to be LX. Yeah, yeah, it's, it should be just like this, it should be fine. Let's save this and let's run this. Okay, so we have a plus at the end of each line now, so that's good. And we can even select it, that's fine. That's super nice. Uh, let me... Huh. So <laughs> the, the fact that everything is just like one big line is, is <laughs> it's causing us some, some, some troubles here. <laughs> um, okay, good. So something we can do here is CMDI equals um, I 
plus three. Um, so this is basically the, the index at which we're, we're supposed to insert the new, start inserting the new line, right? I is the current, yeah, it's, we're iterating through this array of commands, which is like a very, very long array in every three entries, we get a new command. So that's why we are iterating every three entries in there. And, um, and I wanted to save the position at which we would insert the new line, if we insert a new line. So it would be I, I plus three. This is good, this is good, I like. Um, need a comma here. Uh, yeah, 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 that's good. Now let us try to replace the true with something, something that is a bit more smarter. Uh, we can use the cur, uh, a cur y, right? It's cur y. Um, so we're gonna go if cur y equals hmm, hashtag menu. Let's try that. Oh, it totally works. It totally works. Uh, menu minus one. No, menu plus one. Yeah, 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 okay. <laughs> it's a bit janky, but it works. It's, it's good. Okay, so now we have a plus at the end of each line and this allows us to, uh, to uh, well, this, mm, because the, now when we press this, this will add a line at the very end, right? So this is not quite, ooh, ooh, not quite working the way we want it to. Uh, we want to, we want to now change the way new line works. But yeah, we're getting there, we're getting there. Don't, don't stress me out, don't stress me out. Um, yeah, so I think there is a command called add i. Let me look this up. Now I don't know. All right, so this is our wiki here. Add i doesn't really work. Um, what about add though? Let me let me let me look up add. Yeah, so see the third parameter in add um, is the index index or the value to be inserted. Um, if an index is not supplied, it's assumed to be table plus one. Okay, that's good. Uh, um, so here's an example. So I'm just sampling, you know, how to read things. So uh, if we have one, uh, one, five, seven, nine, and we add a three at spot number two, so that's going to be here and everything afterwards moves one over. And that's what we want. Okay. So just like the third parameter needs to be I. So we're going to do uh, on a new line, we're going to do add I. Oh no, not add I. What am I talking about? <laughs> uh, my menu dot cmdi so that's kind of like the index at which we, we should start inserting things um there is a problem yeah yeah uh, plus one plus two well, it could be plus one as well but yeah uh yeah 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 okay so this is good this is good let's try this Yep, yep, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, I would maybe, if I do that, I would or maybe also do a um, cell y plus equal one. What, what did I do? What did I do? Cur, cur. I thought I, I'm gonna be like cool and I'm gonna like, you know, use my memory to Nah, 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 I'm not good enough at this. My memory is, is Swiss cheese. Here, it's not cell Y, it's uh, cur Y and cur X. We're gonna set to one. Um, just making sure that the cursor jumps to this new line when we insert a new line, so it's a bit clearer, right? So now we can insert things here. Uh, we can obviously delete them as well. That's good. And we can also insert something at the end. This is also very important. Good. All right, so this means this insert lines thing is finished. So now we have to address this better position controls. And I, man, I, maybe I didn't explain it la well last time around, but so the problem is that our speed and the position at which enemies are when they move around on the screen are kind of linked. And that is because we have like this weight statement and that's how we can control the sequence of things. Like we're gonna, we're gonna say fly in this direction at this speed and we can wait that many frames, right? Um, so if you make um, things go faster, right? Like, if you go, oh, and it's not flying in fast enough. Like, I want to move faster. So we're going to increase the speed. 
But now we're still waiting the same amount of frames. And so the, um, the ship will fly further in, like it will arrive at a different position because we, we, we wait the same amount of frames, but the speed has changed. Um, so every time we are just want to tweak the speed, but we want to lead everything as uh, the same, we have to tweak two values. We have to tweak the speed, but we also have to tweak the weight. And that's an inconvenient. We just want to maybe just be like, okay, leave everything as it is, but just make it go faster. And in order to do that, we have to do a, maybe a different weight statement, right? Right now we are waiting for frames, um, but we might want to wait for something else. And that else that I want to wait for is distance. So not just um, waiting a certain amount of frames until you continue executing um, the code, but also wait a certain amount of pixels that the enemy has traveled until you start executing uh, code. Um, this might be a bit difficult because depending on what you do, you might get the enemy stuck on the screen. But you know, it, it's, it's never going to occur in this in this tutorial at all. Um, yeah, so let me let me try to fix fix this. I think this is a good idea. Now, previously, what I did is I had like a separate statement. I had a, like a distance statement when I and I did like some test stuff. Um, but I think it's a good idea now that we are using two parameters. It's basically um, be like e um, dist, right? Dist weight. I'm going to set the parameter two to the dist. Uh, so dist is going to be like the dist destination uh, distance weight. Um, so we are using uh, the same para the same command, the weight command, to wait for either a certain amount of frames or a certain amount of distance for the um, uh, for the player to. Uh, to do it. Um, right, so here's the weight for the frames, and I'm gonna go else if e dot, yeah, it, it, dist equals zero is what I want to do. And let's, let's go equals smaller zero. Um, so if distance is set to zero or is smaller than zero, then uh, do the brain. And then here when we're moving stuff, what I want to do is basically say like, E dot dist minus equal. Hmm. Let's go equals max zero. Uh, 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 uh. E speed floor e speed because we might have negative speeds, right? So this is kind of like the <laughs> just to explain what is happening. Uh, oh wait, 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 wait. Uh, e punct dist minus there we go um, so if distance um, distance might be like okay well let's wait until you travel 10 pixels right um, so let's say there's 10 in distance then after we move the player what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the distance those 10 pixels and we're gonna subtract the speed from that and we're flooring it and uh, not flooring mm, it should be absolute uh, we, we're <laughs> Good that I, I, I did this. Uh, we're subtracting the absolute speed from, from those. So let's say the player is moving at two pixels at per, per frame. And the enemy is moving at two pixels per frame. So we subtract two from those 10. So we arrive at eight. And if the player, the, the enemy is moving at negative speed at minus two pixels per, per frame, um, that's okay but because we're doing the absolute that strips off the, the sign. It turns every number positive. And then, but we also do like the max here, max zero. Um, that means that if this statement here ever drops below zero, then we reset it to zero. So distance never gets negative. So technically we don't need this anymore now, but I, um, I'm i keeping this around. It's, it doesn't cost us anything, why not? Um, okay, there's one more th problem is that when we're spawning an enemy, we want to, we need to have something uh, in the distance, uh, set in dist. Um, let me see where we're spawning an enemy. It should be here. That's why I'm, I'm so confused. Oh, there we go. So the, the way we have weight, we need to have dist. Okay. Let's try that. Did not work. A uh, dist. <laughs> I said dist. There we go. Oops. Okay. 
Okay, so let's do the test for this. So we're waiting for 80 frames. We're gonna set this to zero. Uh, now it doesn't wait at all, but now let's let's wait for 64 frame, um, pixels. See, now it goes to the center of the screen and then continues. So, and now when we make the speed higher, let's make the speed higher, it does the same thing, right? We can now tweak the speed at which the, the enemy is flying can be very slow and it will always um, fly to the same position on the screen. Is that good? I think it's good. So yeah, we can now tweak this a little bit. So let's go like this. Uh, and I think 64 is to, to do too, too much, but 32 might be fine. I want it to give a bit more of a, I want it to maybe to fly a bit further into the screen, although, hmm. Let's, let's, let's see, let's make it slow. Yeah, right. Okay, good, let's let's export this. Okay, let's look at brain two here because here's also when we had a, some, some problems with here. So we can do here like a weight 64, no, zero, 64. And this may will make the, the ship go into the center. Maybe 64 is too much, let's go 48. Yeah. Um, I am going to do a 0 0.5 here. Yeah, looks a bit more smoother. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I wanted to introduce a new command now, which I think is gonna be very powerful and we're gonna do some really cool things with that. Let me export this. Um, so um, yeah, so we have the better position control, but now we have like this change brains. I wanna introduce a go to command. Ooh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so go to, <laughs> you might, this is an old programming command. You don't use go to these, these days, it's, it's a cursed command. But uh, in, a, when, in olden times we did the programming, functions were, did exist, but the simple types of programs would like, uh, you could just jump to a line of the program, just like, just go there. <laughs> you would have like something like, um, you know, uh, go to uh, 10, right? And then when that gets executed, uh, the programming execution will just jump to line number 10. <laughs> so it's like here, you see 64, that would be, it would just jump into this line <laughs> and then start executing from there. You could just jump around in the program. Uh, you could do loops like this, you could do functions like this. It's <laughs> It was a bit messy and you could got, get into trouble. Um, for that reason, when you look at old programs, old programs often have like a number at the beginning of each line. So like if you change the number of lines or something like this, so that you that all your go-tos don't, don't get screwed up. So like you would write a number before every line so you could address it with go-to. And that's also how you could insert, <laughs> I'm not gonna get into this. Yeah, so we want to maybe jump around in the current brain that we're executing. So maybe we repeat parts of the brain, but also maybe jump to a different brain and execute part of the, a different brain. And that would maybe, so for example, something we could do is like when you have a boss fight, we create um, different phases and each phase will have a different brain. And then at the end of each phase, you jump to a different brain. And that will be just completely different phase, and that's that. That way, you don't have to have like a giant brain for for the boss fight. You just you can uh, split the boss fight into multiple brains. And also, you might be able to have like you know um, uh, reusable uh, parts of of um, enemy behavior. Maybe just something that you always do, like fly away behavior, might be always the same. So you might be just reusing some some other brains. I think there's some cool stuff you can do with this. So the, uh, yeah, it's gonna be GOT go to. Maybe I should have used four letters for the commands. Um, and then let's do the enemies. Let's, let, let's execute, let's execute this. So if, uh, else if, um, command is GOT, go to. Now, and this gets cursed now a little bit. <laughs> Um, we just need to change the brain of the enemy. We just swap out the entire brain of the enemy. I mean, yeah. <laughs> Yikes. <laughs> Let's go, baby. <laughs> so the first command is gonna be the brain and second command is gonna be the bur -I. Uh The only problem is that here, we're adding three to the bur -I. Um. 
mm -mm, but we could solve it by going minus one. Um, also, it might be divided by three, so we'll count the lines. We need some indicator of what kind of index we are currently when we're selecting one, so because otherwise it's, it's gets get a bit difficult. But yeah, no, it's good. <laughs> I feel a bit queasy about this. No, don't get me wrong, <laughs> but let's try this. Uh, oh wait, no, no, power minus three. What I? Good thing I I I, I look. Okay, so. Can I can I can I test this somehow here? Oh, by the way, I just noticed something. Um, uh, if we're setting the heading, uh, we kind of want to eliminate the, the the animation, right? So how do we stop an animation? Um, SPT equals nil. Yeah, yeah, we want to do that. Um, yeah, because the the setting is supposed to be set to something, right? So. Um, we don't want that um, to then immediately get animated away by maybe some kind of lingering animation. Um, okay, good. Let's try that. Right, so I want to add here a new command. Now we have to be careful. <laughs> if I change to go go to, then we might... Um, yeah, we, let, let's try that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yikes, that doesn't feel good. <laughs> um, Maybe we should do like a test here uh, that if, if the brain is, is wrong, then it, it just doesn't do it. Power one equals zero or and brain or something like this. I don't like this, it's just 11 tokens and we're probably never gonna need it in the game. It's just like a security thing for for the editor. Also, this is also a bit cursed. Yeah, there's just like a lot of errors we can cause by this. Okay. Um, remove robustness. The thing is, we're gonna copy this entire function wholesale into our uh, code later on in our shmup. Now in our shmup, we don't need this robustness. We don't need to make sure that, that the, the brain that we're selecting is a valid brain, right? Because then by this point, all the brains will be fine. But while we're tinkering with the brains, we don't really want our code to break because we, we set the brain to some kind of weird number. So uh, I don't know, maybe maybe here, I don't know if I should do this here or we're doing the go to or when we're doing the do enemies. You know what, I'm, I'm gonna do it here. I'm gonna do it here, and we're gonna just introduce a new, a whole new function. I'm gonna put it here. Uh, valid, validate, valid, data, brain, brain check. <laughs> um, e brain, right? Uh, let's let's do like a brain check e. So this will just check if if the current brain that we're executing is if that's if that's that's something right. If it's if it's, if it's bad, then then we're gonna we're gonna just reset the brain. So we're gonna brain check uh, function brain check e, and, and if the brain check is is not good. If brain check equals false, then return end, right? If there is something wrong with this, we're just not gonna do anything anymore. Um, okay, so here's the brain check. <clears throat> we're gonna go if, um, mm -mm -mm. Uh, equals nil, then, return false and then at the end we're going to return true um so yeah if we set the brain to something that is bad then we're just not going to do anything anymore um let's let's try this go yeah see it's working i mean it's not working um <laughs> there's a problem here we might want to actually put some persistent message maybe on the screen that might be nice Hmm. Yeah, yeah, we should maybe. Uh, we have like this message system, but this message system is for temporary messages, right? Let's let's just use the message system. I'm lazy. Lazy devs, right? Am I right? 
Um, so here an enemy. Uh, so if there's a problem with the brain, I'm gonna add. Um, we're gonna do like if msg, if hashtag msg equals is greater than zero than else. Um, and then we're gonna go brain brain is nil. Something like this. Um, or let's make a useful message. Or wrong brain. Bad brain. <laughs> let's go. Bad brain. <laughs> Bad brain. Uh, and then dot dot uh, ebrain. Uh, and then the time is going to be very short. We're going to set the time like five frames. Um, because uh, if, if there is a message, we're gonna just like uh, refresh the message. So we're gonna go uh, msg one uh, dot t equals five. It's uh, it's a bit of, yeah, it's a bit of a it's a bit of a it's a bit a bit weird. But let, yeah, let let me let, let me just roll with this. Oh yeah, bad brain. There we go. <laughs> bad brain. <laughs> At brain zero. Okay, cool. Um, so um, that will give us this right message. Now the, I want to check something else, and that is if we somehow the index that we are jumping to is not a command, but it's actually some unknown command. Um, I want to also do like a, like a check for that. So uh, 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 uh. so we preliminarily get get the get the command. And if the command is not good, then we also gonna gonna complain. So local my bra equals brains e brain. If bri is smaller than bra, then so if because like if we can run out of brain, it's fine. It's it's fine if if our the command that is executed in the brain brain is kind of like we've run out of commands in the brain and we. Where the index is set to a command that doesn't exist, that's okay. That that just means nothing will happen. But if we um, jumped to a location that contains some information, but the information is unknown, then we kind of want to know that. Um, so if we set something, then we save this uh, local cmd equals this. Yes. So we get the command, and then we're gonna loop through our list of valid commands. And if we don't find it in that list, then that means that we are jumped to some weird location that has a command that is, maybe it's we jumped into a location that contains data. In this case, ooh, bad. Okay, so we're gonna go uh, for um, C in all command list do. Uh, then we're gonna go local found equals false. And then we're gonna go if c equals cmd, then found equals true. Uh, and then we're gonna go if found equals false, then then we're gonna we're gonna do the same thing as we did here, where it's like we're gonna. Um, let uh, the player know that this is this is this is not good. This is this is this is all sorts of bad. Um, so if message is greater than zero, then yes, that's good. And then add text bad command dot dot e cmd. Yeah, that's good. Um, something I want to do here as well is when we execute, when doing the do brain, uh, if we haven't found what, com if the command is weird, we're gonna just gonna return. Uh, yeah, if the brain is broken, then we're not gonna advance the brain anymore. It's just like, okay, then just return. And again, that was something that we might robustness. 
next robustness because that might mean not be something that actually happens uh, with the finished game, uh, but we might want to keep this around uh, to, in order for, for the game not to crash or in order to make it have like meaningful uh, um, errors. So go to uh, does a bad brain, but we make it go to one. That doesn't actually, <laughs> interesting, that doesn't do anything because it jumps to a location number zero and location number zero is just like out of bounds and so nothing happens. Uh, let's make it go to number one. That works, funny enough. Let's make it go to two. What? Oh yeah, um, return false, I guess. Okay, I'm gonna bring one. I'm not sure why it's doing that. Oh, parameter one, man. Okay, it should be parameter two. Okay. Ooh. <laughs> yeah, okay. So the problem that we had is like now the command that we are trying to execute is actually out of bounds, but in the other direction, um, which is bad. Uh, 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 uh. Okay. If bry is smaller than one, and then else if. Let's try it like this. Bry smaller than one. Brain index. Um, brain line. Let's let's call it. Well, let's call it brain command. It's smaller than one. Uh, brain command index. I'm sorry, I just need to be very specific. Because you know, you want to have error messages that really uh, return uh, false, that really uh, tell you what's happening. Okay, so this bad brain, I'm gonna set it to one. Yeah, see, now bad. I kind of like that the enemy still disappears and we're still restarting this, so that's good. Um, and so now let's set it to one. This should execute fine. This executes fine. Let's set it to something that's bad. Bad command zero. Yes. So the problem is like now with a go-to command is we kind of want to put in the right index, right? Like we want to find out what index we want to send the, um, the, the go-to to and we don't quite know. We don't quite, like we can, like we know that this is index one, this is two, three, four, five, six, but you have to count in our head. It would be nice if we had like a little indicator on the on the bottom that tells us, you know, which index we are talking about. So let's do that real quick. So um, we're gonna do in the UI refresh setup, refresh brain, and there we go. So what I want to do is I want to add a little, a little, a little, a little, little, little something, and that something is gonna be like a little indicator down there. That will, um, there we go, add menu. And then that's going to be like i dot and then dot dot. Let's just do like two for now. Command is going to be nothing. And um, yeah, x is going to be 3, y is going to be 120. Let's just do 120 for now. Um, I want to maybe do a different color so it's clear that it's not something that to be selected. Let's make, make it 15 or something. Uh, uh, yeah, it's something like this. Um, we don't need a CMDI and CMDB. I just want to make sure that the placement is okay. Oh, wait, wait, wait. That's the width. Oh, man. I equals. I, I, two, one, two, three, let's make it four. Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, let's, let's try that. So now you see on the bottom, there's like an indicator, but now that I want that indicator to, first of all, I don't want to be able to select it. 
that's the minority. I want this indicator to only show when we are actually going through uh, through the the lines, right? So it's like uh, we're gonna go if we're gonna get the menu. We're just gonna get the menu here. So it's like this uh, local menu, uh, and then I'm gonna go if my MNU equals dot if my menu and if this <laughs> we have a menu selected and uh, uh, my menu dot cmd equals edit then so if you have selected something that is supposed to be edited then uh, we want to grab the cmdy from that menu. So we'll grab the index that this menu item, this, this button that we're editing, that the, um, the index that this button is supposed to edit, we write that on the screen so we know which thing we're editing. Like this, let's try that. So yeah, now we're not getting it, now we're getting it, right, see? And this allows us to be like, okay, ah, yeah, uh, this is index seven. This is index one and so forth. Well, I thought it would return just nil. Well, never mind. I mean, we're gonna fix this anyway because we just wanna make sure that um, here an update, when moving the cursor up and down, we don't wanna be able to move in the last line because that's where, where our little UI thing resides. Like this, it's fine. It's gonna be fine. But now it's time to test out our capabilities. So, um, oops. Uh, so we have this, right? We have the, um, we now have the, ooh. I cannot select this last entry here. I can go here, I go right here, it jumps me up. Ah, I know why. Mm, because sometimes this last, this last button is not visible, and then, <laughs> oh man. <laughs> ah! You know what? Because we might actually have some additional elements. You know, what if we just create a new, um, a second menu, basically a second UI layer, and that second UI layer is just like never gonna get interactive. You can, can never select it. It's just like something that is just not selectable. And we're gonna call it my menu UI. <laughs> Um, so we're gonna go. Um, we're gonna add this to my main UI, like this at the beginning here. We're gonna uh, reset it. My main UI. A second, a new second system. <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. It's gonna be fine. Um, refreshing the brain. Is there any other refresh that we're doing? Refresh table. Uh, yeah, sure. Why not? Then when we're drawing things, draw menu. There we go. Uh, we're just going to repeat all of this stuff for the menu I. Um, I'm not proud of this. <laughs> I'm not proud of this. Uh, there's ways of doing this a lot easier and we could have made a function out of this but for now it's just like you know, it's quick and dirty quick and dirty we could turn this into a function and we might actually at some point but for now uh, I just want to see results let's try that oh right yeah there we go so now we cannot interact with this anymore and then that makes our job a little bit easier navigating. So basically there's like two, two types of, of button selections of menu um, arrays. So one is that the one that we can interact with that we can just go with our cursor through and another one that is just not interactable. It's just like there to give us some information. Good. Okay. Right. So now finally, finally, let's try to uh, actually apply the go to. So the idea here was that now that's not a real saving measure here right now. Let's be honest, because, you know, it's like uh, it's just one line of code anyway. But uh, yeah, for example, here we could do something like um, we wait and we do it like a head 
zero zero three five, right? Like this. Nothing changed because we're basically setting the heading. And now we know that this is index 10. So here we can delete this. Dang, this is causing me a lot more. Um, yeah, yeah, because sometimes cur x and cur y are just like not, not like the line maybe doesn't exist. So something like if my menu cur y, then. Does this work? This is this this one little indicator caused a lot of troubles. Okay, this worked. Okay, good. All right. So again, uh, let's insert this heading here. I kind of want to do this. So we absolutely go downwards at this specific speed, just like a in the, because we're animating the speed down to 35, 0 0.35 anyway. But this just likes make sure that it actually that's the speed that it starts flying away at. Um, and again, this is index number 10. I'm going to export this so we don't have a problem. And then here, instead of the instead of repeating the same code, we can just do go to uh, one index 10 because we saw the, the button is index 10. And now we're kind of like jumping to a different brain from the here point, right? So we're waiting for uh, until it travels 48 pixels until the UFO travels 48 pixels. And once it travels 48 pixels, what it does now it, it switches brain. It says like, ah, I'm gonna turn this into brain number one at position 10, which is this line. And now it goes downwards and flies away. So now those two enemies share, uh, kind of like share parts over their brain. <laughs> brain sharing. <laughs> so now, for example, if we change the way the, this thing flies away, then that other thing will fly away in the same fashion. That's kind of nice. Also, maybe there's going to be later on parts that's going to, going to be a more elaborate. So being to reuse elaborate movement patterns is kind of nice. And of course, but maybe that's something that comes up next episode, we can repeat things. So we'll, for example, let's say an enemy has to shoot multiple bullets, then we can repeat it this way, we can, can keep shooting this way. But for now, let's move on to the doggy zone. That's right, the doggy zone. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this was cool. Sorry, this goes so slow, but man, I've just encountered so many problems and this has to be really robust because, and again, we're making a programming language, right? There's a lot of like, we're giving the, us, ourselves, our future selves, a lot of power, and that power can be corrupted, as we all have learned from Lord of the Rings. <laughs> um, yeah, so what are the next steps? Well, we're going to continue through our process, through our list of enemies that we want to create. Now, the sideways attack is definitely finished. Uh, we want to do the turnaround now. The turnaround. That is going to be like the big next question. How do we animate um, animate movement, uh, animate the direction? And also maybe like later on, shoot on retreat, I think we can pull off currently. Uh, but the snaky line thing also is going to be a bit difficult. So that's going to be the goal for the doggy zone. Try to make these things work. And if you cannot make them work with the current system, expand the current system to make those things work. And now I'm going to say this thing that I say at the end of each episode. A huge shout out. Thank you so much. I appreciate it for all the people who are supporting the show on coffee.com. This is a big deal for me. Thank you for your support. And also I wanted to lead out a comment. This is a very fresh comment, uh, again by Turtle Quitty. Uh, Turtle Quitty has been following this tutorial very closely and has some really good suggestions always. Uh, this one is from episode 43. I truncated the comment a little bit that we've been discussing uh, uh, sorting algorithm once more. But yeah, here's the question concerning the um, generally the spawn schedule system. Um, that's a pretty interesting approach you want to take uh, for the formation stuff. Sounds like it will get extremely complex to manage though. I would have went for either a special spawn group rather than single spawn for special formations or more likely given the base you already have and want to use at a formation leader field um, that tells the system this enemy is not part of the normal flow it should actually spawn at the same time as the enemy with the id of the formation leader enemy later is uh, latter is easiest with what you have for sure although the first option would play well with a second editor screen for really special formations or reusable patterns um yeah this is a um, uh, this is actually a, something i've been struggling with as well going into this i've been like this is actually a similar system to the way i do i the way i envision this to have it like an intermediate step so you create a spawning group so like a pattern of enemies 
and then that is the thing that spawns, not the individual enemies. Um, but it just adds the additional complexity and that complexity is doesn't benefit the actual game but it, the code still has to the, the game actually still has to manage the code so um in this case i decided that why don't we, don't we just spawn individual enemies and if there is a if we need to group enemies together because it's easier to edit them this way around then that's something we, we might want to implement in the editor maybe the editor itself can maybe through metadata or so track like oh yeah, these enemies belong together these enemies be belong together and that's fine to do it like this um, but in the end, when we export everything for the actual game, I just want a list of enemies to spawn and where they spawn, like the simplest possible list. Uh, but it's possible, it's absolutely possible that we decide, we realize like, man, this makes no sense. We really want to, uh, we want to cluster things a little bit. In this case, we can still expand the current system uh, to make, you know, make use of the, of some kind of formation leader kind of uh, effect. And I will say that I have plans for the brain system that will allow us to maybe spawn multiple things at the same time with the brains. We're gonna see about that later. Yes, but for now we're gonna continue working on the brain stuff. Uh, we're, the work is slow, we encounter all these things that we add additionally, but I think uh, we are going to get there eventually. See you next time around guys, bye bye.